They work on DGP, DG5, and DG3 versions, which you can see on the side right here. You can also see by looking underneath, I believe, there's a sticker underneath here which will give you more information. So, you see the uh, two LSH60 inputs. This one is the primary, it has inputs one and two. This is the secondary, it has inputs three and four. So, normally you would have a cable which goes from this 60 pin connector to two single link DVIs. Uh, and you'd have another cable for here as well. What we can do instead is with these models use my adapter which converts the LFH60 into much more standard dual link DVIs. They also have a nice feature of EDID switching so the uh, EDID or um, default modes presented by this uh, input, the primary, is changed whether or not the secondary has an active uh, connected input. And what I mean by that is if the secondary is getting uh, is plugged into a display, not a display, but a um, graphics card that's powered on, then the EDID of the primary will be switched to the uh, 1920 by 2400 mode. So this is what you get. As you can see in the back, I have a single dual link input connected. And note that my T221 is modified for 60 slash 55 hertz operation, so it's overclocked internally. Uh, for that reason, I have faster than normal uh, modes flashed to the EDIDs in my adapter, which would normally be either 24 or 48 hertz. Uh, for this setup, I have uh, 31, 55, and 60, depending on resolution. Um, those refresh rates are all in the synchronization range. So there's no frame dropping or s temporal stretching. So if we look at the input status, we see default mode, 60 hertz, 1920 by 1200, completely standard monitor. Right now, um, it is being driven through a single link DVI. Uh, you could also use an HDMI connector for that, and pretty much any graphics card uh, with DVI output is going to be able to run this mode. Uh, I have this mode set as the preferred timing mode for the primary input without a secondary input plugged in, and that ensures maximum compatibility. If you want to go to full resolution, that option's right there. 3840 by 2400. Hit OK, hit Apply. Screen goes blank for a second. And there we go. Now we're currently running at dual link 3840, 2160, I mean not 2160, 2400, and we're at 31 hertz. Um, this mode is good if you have um, only one input to drive the monitor with, and it is only in the synchronization range if you have overclocked the monitor. Um, if you've not overclocked it, then uh, this mode would be at 24 hertz, ideally, and it would be synchronized and a little bit less smooth, but still usable for a good number of tasks. So the whole point of the adapter is to run the monitor at full resolution at full refresh. For that, we plug in the secondary DVI. Very easy. Plug it in. Note with ATI cards, you do not have um, an auto detection without a hot plug event. So, we see here 
that the secondary monitor has been detected, if we look at the available resolutions, I'm sorry, this, this field says T221 half, and this is 1920 by 2400 recommended. If we look, that is the, uh, the presented mode. Uh, with ATI cards, as I was saying, the EDID is not reread unless there's a hot plug event. And what happened when I just plugged that in was the EDID of the primary input was switched without a hot plug event on that input. So in order to fix that, we need to click detect. It's going to go blank for a moment. And we'll come right back. And now that the EDID has been detected, we see that it uh, is reading the 1920 by 2400 mode because it's been switched to the uh, secondary EDID of the primary input. Now, if we look in the corner, we see 56 hertz, 3840 by 2400. Again, I'm on an overclocked monitor, so if you did not do the modification, you would see 48 hertz. Uh, that's because you had asked me to flash the 48 hertz EDIDs. Uh, for my adapters, I offer both, uh, not both, I offer 41 hertz for DGM models. Uh, I offer 48 hertz for uh, DGP and DG5 models. And for overclock models, you can overclock either DGM, DG5, or DGP. And for those, you will get 55 hertz for uh, the full resolution two input mode and you will get 31 hertz for full resolution one input mode and for one input fallback compatibility mode you will get 60 hertz of 1920 by 1200. So up here um, in our display arrangement we see one half it's called IBM T221, T221 half recommended 1920 by 2400 and I'm sorry I'll get rid of that flickering the 2221 does have a PWM backlight so if the uh, brightness is not at maximum you will get uh, flickering that effect that you could see um, I'll go down in the corner reduce the brightness and you'll see the uh, strobing occur that occurs on the video because there was a mismatch in the uh, strobing of the backlight uh, versus the capture rate of the camera. So we'll put that back up to maximum so that effect isn't present in the rest of the video. Uh, hopefully this text is, text is clearer and not quite. So if we hit uh, identify, we'll say that we picked up two displays that again so you can see two displays unfortunately one is on the left the other is on the right so let's open up catalyst control center and uh, go to affinity mode which is what we'll need so first thing that we're going to do is go to desktop management creating and arranging desktops we're going to uh, click on this little triangle in the corner and swap. That way we'll have the uh, primary input on the left, which is what we'll need. Note that we still see two and one there, but here we see one and two. Um, it happens half the time. Um, one of the reasons for that is that the EDIDs are identical, so just kind of assigns one to be number one and one to be number two. That's not really an issue. Uh, what we're going to do now is create an affinity group. What that will do is we'll, it will allow the left half and the right half to operate as uh, one monitor. Right now, what we're seeing is two logical displays, one for each input, the left and the right, and the operating system is also seeing two monitors, one on the left and one on the right. 
what Ifinity is going to let us do is it's going to let us present one display to the operating system, which means all of your applications will think that they're connected to one display. So click on the little triangle in the corner, create group, yes. Um, what this dialog says is it will say the uh, only displays available or wait, already belong to extended desktops. To create a group, the desktops must first be disabled. Do you want to disable the desktops? That's going to disable the right half. Um, if you disable the left half and are feeding an image to the right half, you will not get a display on the T221. Um, it's not very flexible. It requires, the T221 requires that the inputs be used in a, the order of one, two, three, and four. So if you display an image to uh, the fourth input or the second input without uh, an image on the first, then you will get no image on the screen. So we'll say yes, screen will flash. It will go to a single 1920 by 2400 input at the full refresh rate. It will come up with this additional dialog, which basically says, do you want them horizontally or vertically? As you can see the options there. Horizontally is the proper choice. You hit accept. And a couple of flashes later, you're presented with one large display. Windows thinks that it's running duplicated 3840 by 2400. Um, so it sees that there are two displays, yet they're displaying one image. Applications, applications work as they should. It's that easy to set up, and uh, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, um, send me an email directly or to the Yahoo group for this monitor. It's the T221 group at Yahoo. Uh, if you wish to buy an adapter, uh, contact me directly. I do make and sell them. Thank you. Bye. The video card I'm using in the system is a Sapphire 5770. Fairly cheap, fairly low power. Bought it for 100 bucks a year and a half ago. Um, Look at the box, has you know, plenty of features, whatever. It's a decent card. Doesn't take up too much power. Um, runs games okay if you're not running anything intensive, but it supports the uh, Ifinity. Now, what's important to know about the uh, 5000 series compared to the newer models is the 5000 series supports two dual link DVIs. Now, the output of a video card is going to look like this. So you can't really tell that it's dual link. The cables, yeah, you can see that they're missing a group in a single link cable. But the video cards are hard to tell. And what happened that people didn't notice is with the 6000 and 7000 series, one of the DVIs is dual link, the other is single link. That means the 6000 and 7000 series are not appropriate for driving a T221. You can use them if you use DisplayPort to DVI adapters. Make sure you get the dual link ones. Um, but they run about 60 or 70 bucks each right now, which adds to the cost. Uh, with the 5000 series, uh, particularly the uh, 50. Uh, 7, I'm sorry, the 5750, 5770, those are the lower power variants. Um, they have two dual link DV outputs, they're compatible with Affinity. The 5850 and 5870 are slightly faster cards, a um, little bit more heat output. Whatever, it's not that much. Uh, but they also have two dual link DVI outs. The 50, 
970 is a dual GPU card, which also has two dual link DVI outs. Um, the 4, 000, HD 4000 series from AMD um, does support two dual link DVIs, but they do not support Ifinity. And support for them has been dropped in recent drivers. Um, as of the 12.6s, I believe. Either way, um, the aforementioned cards are the ones to get if you want to have Ifinity. Uh, basically, if you're using Windows 7 and want a card to drive the monitor without too much expense, pick up one of those four models. Um, it'll serve you well. If you want a more exotic configuration, like uh, requiring NVIDIA for some reason, I don't know, maybe you're, I don't know, whatever reason you have. Um, refer to the group for options. If you're under Linux, you may want to pick up an NVIDIA card for better drivers, but the ATI ones do work. Um, yeah, pretty much Ifinity if you want to use this monitor. It's the way to go. Um, removing it and installing it is fairly simple. All it is is friction held on to the two L fitch sixties. There's one end, there's the other. Clearly labeled, spaced appropriately on both ends. See the three EDIDs in the back. Installation is simple. Just take the adapter. Make sure it's lined up and push up. Simply plug it in. Note that on the secondary cable, there's uh, some blockage over here in the uh, housing of the monitor. So you'll have to remove the locking screw from your secondary cable. Once that's in, the cable will fit and will slide in nicely, like so. The uh, primary input suffers no, uh, no blocking, simply slides on, and you've connected both of your DVIs. You can use the cable nut routing down there. And then, when you're done with that, you can put your, your plastic covers on.